Hey guys, Tony the Soy Sauce Assassin. A little bit rushed here and there, and um, let me tune this down. And I can tell you that there is something wrong with YouTube. I just don't know what it is, but there is something wrong with YouTube right now. And <clears throat> yeah, this this is definitely not scheduled. And I thought about it, so why don't I to do this uh, particular one? But I think this is a good way to kind of launch a thing uh, where we will have like you know. Different, different new stuff to, to, as a topic, as a topic for, for you know, the recorded stuff. All right. So, um, so today we're gonna talk about boxes of cigar club stuff. Now, why are they still in boxes? Because I actually forgot about them. I literally opened them once and I forget about them. So, I wanted to kind of. Show it to you guys how it looks like if you just forget about your cigars in boxes, and let's see how their. You no, know, I, I mean the condition is now being forgotten. All right? I can tell you guys what kind of condition this kind of is stay in, and you can judge for yourself whether or not it's really worth it to go crazy on storing your cigars. But yeah, all these are just the cigar boxes since I started uh, to test out a few of them, and I literally did not smoke. Any of them. So we'll, we'll pick one to smoke today, of course. And while I'm trying to get YouTube to work. Yes, YouTube is working like crazy right now. I don't know why. Um, I don't even know if I'm airing correctly on YouTube. Because I just can't get YouTube to work. Actually, let me, let me see if YouTube is working correctly right now. Let's see if there's anybody that says anything about YouTube issues. YouTube correct... All right, let's see. Current status. Uh, it says... <clears throat> By the way, uh, hi to Steinheifer, hi to Wells, hi to Sherry, hi to Joseph, hi to... I believe that's Chris. I could be wrong. So... I can't even get the YouTube outage map to come out. What the hell? Let me see if I just go to a random page how it looks like. It might be just the internet is slow right now at the moment. Yeah, it could be. It could be. It's not loading like it should. Let me try to open this like, like that. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Would that work better? <clears throat> nope. Still weird. Still very weird. Um, let's see. Change this. Calvin. Calvin, that's what it is. Sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, switch account. Bam. Maybe that will work now. <laughs> Maybe that will work now. Nope, it's still kind of weird. Still kind of weird. Uh, oh, that works. Uh, Joseph Woodruff is on. Uh, and showing that he's on. That's that's good. Okay, so somehow the other one just doesn't work correctly. Now let me get this to work and play some music in the background. It will get started. Uh, I didn't think that's gonna be long today because you know got more stuff to do. But we got a few things we can talk about today. I just happen to need to smoke, so hey, why not? So, the earlier ones are the, the the Provada Club. So here's the Provada Club ones. They come in the straight boxes. And basically I received them. I showed it to you guys before. And I'm just had to find the one that's the earliest. So I guess the, 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 the lowest number, 5A. <clears throat> this one doesn't have a number. 7-9. So I think 7-9 is later. Let me actually check the postage here. So June, July, April, May. Here we go. So, let's do this. And 
da -da 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 -da. I wonder if the chat will still go, like, you know, with, without, so. Oh, here we go. Oh, that weird. That's weird. Okay, so let me adjust this, because I just got the chat messed up on this could, uh, particular one. Let me get the chat box up. Chat box. Here we go. Now that should show. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So hey, Travis, of course, here too. And here's the box. That this was the first box. Came from April of this year. All right. And this uh, after I opened it, it stayed in here the entire time. Because that's how it how it is. I forgot. All right. Let's see. I might have to refresh this chat box. Let me see if I can refresh this chat box. Uh, there we go. Now it's working. All right. So uh, there is a Bovita pack in here, and for April that month, what we have is uh, the Room One Hundred One. Uh, long live the king. And uh, but the paradise, paradise loss. So they all still come kind of good condition. You can tell, nothing moldy, nothing particular. Everything's still in good condition. Literally, it was just in this bag, and in a temperature between seventy-eight degrees to about. 60 degrees. That's the condition that they were in. So this box number one survived. Okay, survived. And let's do box number two. Like you can tell, I didn't even open that much. I didn't even bother to take off the the tape that's on it. <laughs> All right. Number two. Hey Samuel Shea. Hey Matt. So whoop. this one also have a Vita pack. It's pretty much it's halfway down. I think halfway down. Uh, let's see the last cowboy, which I don't even know I have one of these. Now now I do. Um, Epicure from Crooks or Crocs, how you want to say it. Still good condition. No box. No mold. Uh. Aries limited cigars, which I still haven't tried. So they're all in good condition. So second back did survive. Let's put it back. And third back right here. So again, there's Bovita pack in there. Uh, we have the Fuerte Cult. We have the Horo Amanda pre-release. We have the Miami 8 and 11. And I talked about all these. Uh, I mean, the reason I don't smoke any of these is because uh, number one, there's when I get these bags, I don't have much desire to smoke them because either it's not what I usually like to smoke, or I already have them. I just smoke it out of my regular batch anyway. I just didn't smoke out of these, so I literally didn't touch them, and literally forgot what I even got because that's what happened. <laughs> that's what happened. And the last one is. There you go. Okay, uh, unnamed in the Solomon shape. Uh, wise man in Lancero. If you guys know me well, I don't like to smoke Lanceros. And if, if so far you guys see like three or four Lanceros, I don't smoke them. That's the thing. And this is Karen Badger of Berger Maduro. 
So they all survive, even this like unbended, unwrapped one is it's actually quite a, quite oily. It's actually not bad. Alright, so those are the four boxes from the Privada Club. Alright, the Privada Club. Now, for some people, these will be worth every penny. I can tell you that because, like, if you don't collect cigars for a long time, you are most likely going to get some cigars that you never got before. All right? If you don't collect cigars, if you don't buy boxes of cigars, you are most likely going to get uh, cigars that you have never smoked before. Okay? People like me, who has been smoked for a while and literally buy everything that catches his eyes, uh, will constantly get cigars I already have. Which, in this point, in this condition. It's actually not worth it to me because you are paying technically a premium plus shipping to get these cigars. All right. I mean, the two cigar clubs. Uh, I remember one of them. I took out the the, the the food that's in there. I ate it. Let's see how the condition is now. Okay. So we got. Oh, this one is the most recent one. I think with the Matt Mofo. Uh, Fratello and uh, La Barbara Inch and New World. So if you watch my review quite a bit, you'll see like I have most of these smoked on the screen before already. So literally this box is just like I spend the money to buy a stick that I already have plenty of. Right? It wouldn't make sense if that was the case but for people who's new who doesn't know what to try who doesn't know what they like yet this is a good way to 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 figure out what you like what you want you know this is a great way to do it this is uh how you will learn different kind of cigars different kind of um sizes blend uh brand even to 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 you know to get experience of but at the same time you gotta know this is quite kind of pricey too pricey why what i mean by pricey you're paying average ten dollar per, per cigar and really you know when it comes down to it do they worth ten dollar cigar some of them are much much lower that's the thing some of them are much much lower than ten bucks a cigar and majority of that money goes to shipping and packaging you know these packaging ain't free so Alright, so next box. And. Okay, right here. We have the Espinosa. We have the. Oh, that's right. Uh, M Bombay. Uh, Bamero. Bamero. Virginia Farms. And Rocky Patel. 1979, which I really don't like. So, like, just in this box. You know I have at least four of these already. At least four of these already. So, but the truth is that actually I have all of them before, I think. So, you know, you see, that's another $50 that I spend on buying cigars that I probably don't care for. Especially that 1979, I really don't care for that cigar. Like, I wouldn't have bought it for any reason. But, if you're new, if you're new, that would be a good chance to try out all these things. Because some of these are good. The Espinosa and the, and the M Bombay, those are really good. And the Fratello is not too bad, all right? But, like, would you spend 50 bucks? J Stroke, my wife told me to get a job so I can be mod. Uh, we already have mods. <laughs> we already have mods. But that wouldn't be a paid job. <laughs> Your wife is asking you to buy a pay job. So, now that we look through all these boxes, they are in good condition. That really tells you what. So long you have the Bovita pack, you don't have to go that crazy on the, the storage, uh, the how to put things together on the cigars. It's actually not as crazy as you think. Cigar doesn't really go bad that easy. Do a Lancer Lover giveaway. Couple box each ticket answer. <laughs> sure, I can do that. A winner get all the Lanceros. <laughs> Cause I just don't smoke those Lanceros. I, I don't, now I gotta let out one. Which one should I smoke? Now that I show you guys all those, which one should I smoke?
No suggestions? Okay, now it's random choose one day since there's no suggestion. Let's do this. I'm just shuffling the boxes. Last cowboy is an I think. And I don't like to smoke Lancero's. But let me see what I got. If this box this bag has has last cowboy, we'll smoke the last cowboy then. Let's do this. Nope, this bag does not have the last cowboy. This bag does not have the last cowboy. Was that a L L T K M F? Uh, I couldn't tell you. What L L T K M F? L L T K. What's L L T K? Oh, I don't have a list on this thing, so not L L T K, but. Since you guys said room 101 or last cowboy, let's see what I find first. Long live the king. Mofo. Yeah, there is a long live the king mofo in there. Somewhere in the box. Alright, which one is this one? Alright, here we go. The last. But this is like a Lancero. You guys are making me smoking Lancero when I don't like to smoke Lanceros. Come on. Come on. You know, I'll smoke the one uh, room 101 and all the Lanceros. I'm going to combine them. I'm going to do a giveaway with raffle. All right. Every single one of these Lanceros you just saw here is going to be one of those. That way you guys can enjoy it. Because giving me Lancero is like asking me not to enjoy the cigar. I don't know. Some people love Lanceros. And Lancero is getting more popular by the days. Literally. So... But that's a Lancero. I just like a standard, good old cigar with the correct side. Here we go, room 101. All right, let's get this going. So yeah. We'll put these again back to where they belong on the floor. That's where I put them. <laughs> that's where I put them. Literally, I just toss them to the side on the floor. Uh, that's actually a lot where my cigars is. It just tells you that you don't have to go that crazy, that big extent to, to protect your cigar. Now, this cigar is called Room 101 Hit and Run 2. Room 101 Hit and Run 2. Let's get this going. But while we're at it, you know, let's take a, take a look at it. Room 101. Hand and round two. Why is it called hand and round two? Is it hand and round one? Is it hand and round one? Okay. Now the reason I'm looking up is I want to give you guys some rapper information, and that's not that's not something that any reviewer just know off top of the, their head. Okay, they always had to read it. Uh, da, 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 Did not have uh... that. It's a Matt Booth Cowell collab. I think it is, actually. I think it is. Let me double check though. Room 101 with Cowell hidden around Pot Dukes, they call it. Pot Dukes. And they call this almost robusto, almost robusto. It's full strength, so I gotta be very careful on this. Uh, wrapper is not available. Wrap, wrapper leaf is habano. All right, wrapper leaf is habano, and that's all the information that's here. What? Why? Why? That's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. 
How about a binder Indonesian filler Dominican factory is Dominican Republic. They made hundred thousand cigars and it's ten dollar and fifty cents each. All right, ten dollar and fifty cents each. So if you put it to perspective, you know, you're getting ten dollar cigar and then that box is about thirty something bucks. I don't know. Is it worth it to you? Because you gotta know that most cigar company makes hundred percent profit on cigars. Okay. So if this thing was 10 bucks, they only paid four on it. So let's, let's get it started. Yeah, it does smell quite strong. Good cedar, a little bit spice to it. Let's get a cut and light. So how is everybody's Monday? I mean, Monday is one of those days, like I say, where you just hate your day, okay? Because that's the day you go back. That's the day you go like, ah, oh, oh, I don't know. It's, I don't want to go back. You know, Sunday's too short. Today is actually the day that I'm still finalizing my trip for... Uh, the Arizona time because I try to try to do something every day so that I'm somewhere doing something every day but I don't know if I want to cramp everything every day with cigar shops so you know I, I try to find something else to do and you know if there's any good recommendation that's not sightseeing I'll give it a try I don't think I have any of those notes. I just toss them, cause I, I I love to learn something about cigars, but a lot of time it's one of those too long didn't read. You know, some of the stuff that has the background story, you gotta know that it sounds so cliche that it's not worth reading. <laughs> so for me, I don't read them. I I love to know what the cigar tastes like and why they taste like that, but not like. The story of why they created certain things because obviously it's for business, <laughs> right? So a lot of those I don't read because I write a lot of papers, I write a lot of essays, I write a lot of uh, you know documentation for clients, and what I learned is that uh, a lot of time when you write something like that for for the, for your client for your customers. You put a lot of BS in there, <laughs> so like I I I know that it's probably like seventy percent fact, thirty percent add more MSG into it to make it more sound more spicy, sound more like heated, sound more passion. But I, I don't really think they they you know it does that for me. So hence why I don't do that. You know I don't really read it. And I don't want to read the notes that's in there that might influence how I pick up the notes. So I wouldn't read that either. I sometimes I just I just think that when you smoke, you just want to enjoy the smoke, right? You just want to enjoy the conversation, the smoke, the taste, uh, the time together, but not necessarily allowing other uh, other things to affect what you were thinking. Oh, uh, I'm. Most people already know I'm a strategic consultant, so I do consultings, I do reporting, I do uh, strat strategies, planning, uh, business plans, reading, proof readings. Uh, basically, I take a company that want to expand, that want to get bigger, and I strategize for them. Okay, this one's got some citrusy, wood notes, earthy notes, a little bit muddy here and there. And you can tell that the smoke has its weight to it. It's got weight. It's got weight to this smoke. I think this got combination of cedar and oak wood in there. It's, it's not just plain wood and it's not sweet, so. I 
has a little bit of bitter note to it. So, hey, Brendan. Hey, Martin. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird, right? Monday life. It, because this week is going to be kind of eh. Because I'm going to Arizona at the weekend. So I'm trying to shove a few of the life and a few of the pre-recorded stuff in. Uh, just so that this, you know, I felt like I did my job, right? <laughs> I felt like this is a job. I'm going to do my job. Make sure if I'm going to take some time off, I'm going to put some time in there. Very strong, thick smoke from the draw, okay? Now you can feel like there's some weight to it. It's muddy. Uh, it's heavy. But it's enjoy enjoyable note. It's heavier on the draw, but not as heavy on the retro hill. Hey, Zach. Lunch break is 8.16, man. 8.16. Have all kind of people over here. So, you know, while I'm at it, why don't I, uh, I, I, I guess, um, put some information here and there in there. Number one is actually for the group members. Uh, if, you're, if you're a group member and you're not here, you're not, you're not new. Uh, you're not old members. You're not the OG member. You realize that there's no OG uh, numbers for your name. And you were wondering what's that, that, what that is going on. I just want to kind of put it out there to guys, let you guys know. The OG numbers are not something you can just obtain, right? Those were someone that has supported the cause when Shadow Smokers Legion first started. So those people deserve those numbers and they have earned it. And that's why they have those numbers. And you can't just say, go, those numbers, some are vacant, can I just take it? You can't just take it. So that's why they're there and that's why it's not meant to... You know to just fit people in there so it might see where that list says retired is not meant to just be fitted <laughs> and um the next thing is the prestige numbers I'm not making it so that it's easier to earn because uh, I, I feel like people who have to earn that is someone that's above and beyond, somebody that's almost OG worthy to earn that number, right? So where did he say he's eating guys? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So that's not something that you can uh, you can just simply says, "Hey, I've been active. I wanna I wanted that number." So that's not. You have to be nominated, and you have to you know everybody has to agree that you're worthy of that number to get it. Okay. All right. So the next next is in, uh, uh, the important part. Okay. I'm going to Arizona starting Friday, and I arrive there around noon time. And you can expect me to just gotta go to hotels and eat after I arrive. Now the first day I'm gonna end up going to the Embargo Cigar Lounge uh, near there, and Cigar Mechanic is gonna have a live live uh, event over there for AJ Fernandez, and that's the that's the event I'm going to go support. So that's where I'm gonna party for the night. So if you guys got time, show up to that place. Let's party. Take some pictures. Maybe we'll do a live if I can get the owner to eat something nasty. Okay? And that's one. Number two will be the next day. When I wake up in the morning, eat breakfast, get ready, jump in the pool for a couple hours, and I'm going to Cigars Daily the next day. All right? I'm going to Cigars Daily the next day, and uh, I will be there until 4-ish, 5-ish, and... and I have to decide what to do after that. I haven't decided what to do after that. I don't know. It depends on how tired I am, how much more nicotine I can handle, and, and, and we're going for there. 124? That's good. So, for that audit list, all right, by the end of the, the week that I came back, all right, so end of next week, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to take the list of people. We're going to match it. We're gonna take those people, uh, take those people that's not on the list, and give them a final call out. And if they did not reach back in a year, uh, in one week, we remove them. Just 
just remove them. Okay, that's what we gotta do. So, if we gotta remove 70 people out of the group, so be it. So be it. Hey, no problem. Good, good. Finally, you got it. And you deserve those bodyguards. I'm sorry. It takes forever to get there. I just don't know why every time I pack your stuff, I don't put it in there. So. Uh, hey, Fernando's on. Got to do what we got to do. You got to kick them. You got to kick them. I do not want any, like, abandoned accounts and stuff like that in the Shadow Smokes Legion. So if they don't... They don't participate, they don't want to be here. We kick them. Alright? Once we kick them, it's done. And if you're watching this for the very first time and you're wondering what you know how Shadow Smokers Legions are like, we don't bullshit, okay? If you if you're not gonna be active, you shouldn't be in it and just you know, we boot them. There's a little bit of coffee notes in here too. And smoking this kind of reminds me of something like a how do I, how to describe that? Something like a Plancencia Alma Forte, or something like a Tabernacle ish, thick, heavy. You know, I think lighting fried my modem. And I have a big problem with the lives. No, see, that's the thing. Uh, I think the internet is kind of weird <laughs> right now. I'm having a little bit of uh, issue with internet as well. So, 4.30 p.m. to 3.30 a.m. Wow. You sleep through the day, working through the night. You are Batman. You are Batman. Okay, so, and Sunday, because of so many people has asked me to go to Fox Cigar Lounge, so I'm going to the Fox Cigar Lounge. I don't know what time I'm going to get there, but that's where I'm going to go. So if you guys are planning to go to Fox Cigar Lounge, just hang out and um, on Sunday, uh, you let me know. And then we can kind of schedule a time to meet up there. And I'll be there until at night time. And then after that, uh, I'm going to meet up with Harrison. And we're going to do a, maybe a video or a live over at TNT. Monday, on schedule. I don't know what I'm going to do on Monday. So, you know, maybe I'll just hang out. And maybe, or maybe I just so uh, go to the swimming pool for the day. <laughs> you never know. So that's, that's what I plan to do. Sawa proof. She recorded it. <laughs> so yes, I can tell that this is a medium plus full because the the smoke comes in so slow yet comes really thick, really heavy of uh, of intense taste. So if you like this, you like something that's full bar. You like something that will give you that hit of like vitamin N. Uh, you you like thick smoke that lingers on your tongue, uh, and you like the band. I like this kind of band. You know, matte color, shiny yet, uh, good color selection, uh, internal presentation. This thing's got it. Okay, this has got what I like as presentation. All right, what I like as presentation, is something like this. Definitely like it. Definitely like it. But. You know, it is a cigar that you had to go slow. You don't want to go too fast because it's going to hit you. All of a sudden, it's going to hit you. If you smoke uh, some of those really easy in the beginning cigar and hit you, that's why you that's why you kind of experience with this. In the beginning, you don't feel so much. Halfway through, you're like, what did I do to myself? All right? And you're debating whether or not to finish that last third. <laughs> okay? And you're like, oh, I kind of don't want to waste this. And you'll probably try your best to finish that last third. Now, when you finally finish this, go inside, go inside your house, take a shower, or just relax on the sofa. You start to sweat. And then when you start to, you know, the, the room starts spinning, you feel something weird, that's how you get that overloaded nicotine. So be very careful. This is the Room 101 
uh, Hit and Run Part Dukes or Part Two. Smoke output, not bad. Construction and burn so far, not too bad either. Definitely heavy, definitely heavy. So warning to the beginners, the guys, smokers, that's not something you want to be smoking. When is the Voyage Ash Contest? November. November is the Voyage Ash, uh, Ash Contest. And we'll end it in two weeks. That will give me time to kind of figure out what prizes we're going to give to the winner. So this time we'll have prizes for the winner. Okay. Um, ash, ash, ash. All right, Jason. Yeah, the internet is crappy right now. I'm not gonna lie. I, I was having the same issue uh, when I logged back on earlier today. Okay. Uh, Ivan Fernandez says, "What's up, everyone? Hi, Ivan." So today I send out majority of the the leftover cups. There's only three more boxes that need to be sent out. So I try to send out those three tomorrow, and that should be all the glass that has been paid and pre-ordered. All right. So you know, if you didn't receive it, you should receive it this week. Uh, for the beanies, there are still four people that didn't pay for it, but you know, it is what it is. Yankees. All right, Joe, go watch Yankees. But as a Bostonian, I had to say, can't look out for that. I can't, I can't cheer for your Yankees. Can't cheer for Yankees. What Bostonian? Bostonian don't cheer for Yankees. <laughs> Bostonian cheers for Red Sox. You know what's really funny is that uh, in Asia, Red Sox is most popular. <laughs> Yankees, and you say, oh, I like Yan uh, Red Sox. They'll be like, oh, Red Sox. But you say Yankees, like, what's Yankee? Because in Japanese, when you say some, someone's Yankee, that means somebody is um, like, a, like a delinquent. You know, when you call somebody delinquent, they are, Yank they are Yankees in Japan. Uh, how about them Cowboys? I think uh, in football, Cowboys are quite well known too. So the smoke output on this is really good. Uh, the flavor is quite intense. They're quite intense. So you get the strength, and you get the you get the flavor as well. I mean, you get the flavor strength together. So it's not like a, a bad trade off. Sometimes you get a, like a cigar that doesn't have a lot of taste but has a lot of strength. That's when you like ah, oh, I picked the bad cigar. You know, when you when you want to do this, you want to um, you know something that close to the strength so the flavor is either more or equal to the strength that you're getting uh crunchy i'm smoking the room 101 hit and run part two and this they call this size almost robusto so The Cuba Libre is a full strength, medium flavor cigar, but really good. Had one last night. But don't wouldn't you prefer to get something like full flavor with full strength? You know what I'm saying? Like you, you wouldn't want a light flavor flavor uh, full strength cigar. Because you always gotta feel like uh like lack of that satisfaction at the end you want another cigar on the end that's not something that you want you want something that 
at least give you enough flavor to feel that you have smoked something substantial and um, knowing the strain is gonna be full you can't have another cigar so that's that that was okay that was okay so that's what you want that's what you want so Sometimes you want a strong cigar. Well, technically, you can get strong cigar by smoking it fast. <laughs> LFD is a strong steak with good flavor. I agree with that. I agree with that. I just wish that the decoration on that particular cigar can be a little better. You know? Luckily, today I'm drinking a really sweet drink, so I'm not going to feel too sick. All right, Mac, go watch your Yankees. So yeah, I um, I debated whether or not to just record this video today, but I figured you know why record it if I can be on right now. Uh, I do want to record something for Wednesday and maybe for Saturday as well in case you know the uh, I didn't get get online or for whatever reason. But for now, today is it. I'm gonna share a cigar with you guys uh, on a Monday. On a Monday, very random. It's a cheer root, so decoration isn't a priority. Sponsor the video to record this way. Medium strength, full flavor is the spot for me. Yeah, of course, right. Like I say, you want a cigar that has more flavor, but less strength. That's like the perfect combination, right? More flavor, less strength. I mean, that's how you like kind of want to go with a premium cigar because that trade-off is closer. You know, a lot of time you'll uh, smoke a, uh, a bundle of cigars. I mean, there's strength there, but not much flavor or very dull flavor or very binary flavor. So that you're not getting your money worth sometimes. Well, you're not getting your time worth because you know smoking that time still takes time. Granted that short filler cigars actually burns faster. You're still kind of not satisfied at the end. And this is why we go to like premium cigars, boutique cigars because they blend for that flavor. They blend for that enjoyment. And you know the strength unfortunately comes with certain tobacco that they use to blend. And that's why you know if they could make everything medium plus or medium cigar uh, strength and with full flavor then yeah they would it, it, unfortunately it's not that simple i like full flavor full strength i like my stick to whoop my ass <laughs> you know a lot of people who's uh, you know bigger bigger guys and and, and uh, uh, tend to have better metabolism like a full full cigar almost like you know drinking something really heavy in drinks so that you get tipsy on the first sip. You know, some people like that. Some people like that. I feel like, you know, getting that tipsiness kind of ruins my enjoyment here and there. You know, I want to enjoy it totally sober, not <laughs> enjoying it when I'm not sober. So that kind of makes a slight difference. Hey, Juan. <laughs> this thing keep lit pretty well. This thing keeps lit pretty well. It's very tight pack. Uh, but draw is like just medium draw. Just a little after sweetness. If I was to take a draw, let out the air, and just try to taste it. Because I think there's some tobacco in my mouth. Just try to taste it a little bit. I get a little bit of sweetness to it too. Just a little bit, just a tad of sweetness, just a tad of sweetness. So yeah, uh, while we're at it, this is this is unusual because usually we will uh, address anything that's in the group inside the group. But I figure, you know, why not? We have most people that watch this are in the group, so let's take a look at what's in the group today. You know, what is in the group today? If it loads, because internet is like crap right now. 
Like, I cannot even view Facebook right now. I don't even know why. Let me try my phone. See if that works. Let's take a look. Okay. Willie Panero is showing me uh, his Shady XX. Shady Double X that he received today. And I'm jealous because I still have not received my Shady XX. I still not receive it. I probably will receive it by tomorrow, but I still haven't received it yet. Uh, one of the things that I was unhappy about today is um, I canceled my uh, back order last week with uh, Cigars International because they back ordered my cigar, right? So I canceled it. They charged me, well, at least they, well, I went through PayPal. So they charged me the entire order amount, amount of money. And basically they say it will fall off because they didn't take that much money out of it. Uh, today, it's still that same amount. I called them. Now they're pointing fingers, you know, where, uh, you know, PayPal is saying that they had to close that, that payment so that they can, they can drop it off. Uh, and then basically, Cigar International says there's nothing we can do. It's with PayPal. So they're pointing that finger to each other. And, uh, you know, today I still haven't get my money back <laughs> for the, for the cigar that I ordered. It's not too big of a deal anyway, because, you know, I'm already putting that money there. It's not a big deal. But having me to go back and forth just to get my money back for something that I canceled, it's a hassle. It's a hassle. Now, it might not sound good, but you got to know that for a consumer to call, time takes, time is money, right? Those people who pick up the phone, they're getting paid. They're working. But us who's calling to chase after their money, they're not getting paid. I mean, waiting time is ridiculous and... Getting an answer that doesn't help, waste of time. So I hope that you know they, you know, C Cigars International will fix that. It, it's something so simple. All they had to do was process a refund, but they don't want to do it. Have you guys tried the Her Sampler? I'm not a fan of light sticks, but they were good. From where? Who made the Her Sampler? Who made the Her Sampler? Brendan Shapen has finally finished his uh, uh, Davidoff Nicaraguan. So I hope you enjoyed it, you know. I hope you don't pound that thing. <laughs> um, with headphone, wife hollering on the window, eight feet away, wanted me to pull the car in. She couldn't get my attention, so she found it necessary to launch the safety glasses out the window. Ruin my person. <laughs> so guys, daily, let me take a look. Because um, I've tried most of Cigars Daily Cigars. Let me take a look. Sampler. Sampler. CAO Session. Good. CAO Session. Alright, so now I'm looking at a sampler. I see the United Cigar Freebies, Gwen Habano Persian King, uh, La Aurora Pride Pack, Monte Cristo Freebies. Uh, no. The Liga Zebra set. I don't see it. Maybe it's a, like an email kind of thing. You actually named it? <laughs> Heard? Okay. Uh, let me see if I can find it. One second. Pretty sure I can find it. Oh, uh, here. Liga Zebras heard the sample. I found it. Okay, so it's the Liga Zebra four pack basically. 
Now we tried Liga Zebra many many times. It's not something that's new. He just changed the ban, right? He just changed the ban to the new premium ban, which is great. I mean, I think all the cigars should have a ban, should have a decoration, and those ban looks great. All right. So uh, in terms of Liga Zebra, it is uh, it is not bad. It's a really good cigar. In compared to the Jungle Stick, uh, the Jungle Stick was just horrible. I, I you know like a better way to describe it. It's just not good. Liga Zebra beats it any day. Uh, unfortunately, that's the way it is. So it looks like there's multiple sizes uh, to the Liga Zebra uh, samplers. Basically, that's you know the new band and everything. It actually looks pretty good. It actually looks pretty good. You don't like the Liga Zebra? Maybe you just don't like barber pole in in uh, in general. Like if you don't like barber pole, you're not gonna like Liga Zebra. I mean, for the price for Liga Zebra. In a, in, it's not expensive at all. In this pack, it's basically five bucks each. Basically, you know. So for five bucks, that's not bad for five bucks. You know, for five bucks, you get a really enjoyable cigar for five bucks. I, I would think I would say that it's very enjoyable cigar for five bucks. There's no question about that. So I had thought about this and and and. And you guys already know uh, that I didn't want to go to Zero Cigars, all right? I got I didn't want to go to Zero Cigar, but I thought about if I got really nothing to do, I wanted to go to a store, buy a Gurkha cigar, and just go in front of the the Zero Cigar, and literally smoke it. <laughs> I would learn, I I want to, you know, I I want to show that I rather smoke a Gurkha cigar than go to go inside Zero Cigar and just hang out. <laughs> I thought about that, but at the same time, I need a getaway car just in case Crooked Beer comes out and tries to bash me into mush for doing that. So I don't know. I don't know. If I have a getaway car, I will go in front of the Zero Cigars and take a picture of me with the with the Gurkha, and then I'll take that Gurkha and go finish it somewhere else. Cause like I say, I rather smoke an entire Gurkha than go inside the Osaka. <laughs> All right, and I want to prove it. I want to prove it that this is what I will. Oh, you know, I what I put my word where you know my mouth is. Okay. If I tell you that's what it is, I really truly mean it. I rather smoke a Gurkha than go inside. So I, I'll probably do that just just for entertainment purposes. I don't want to walk in. That's the thing. <laughs> walk in. You have created your traffic. You're part of the statistics. You're part of the statistics. Right? You don't want to walk in. You want to be that part of the statistic that did not walk in. Instead of the part of, the part of statistic that walked in. Right? You want to be the part that didn't walk in. I don't care how crazy fun inside is. I just don't want to walk in. I want to be outside. Wear the Gurkha. Take a picture. I can go on Mondays. I can go on Monday. I got nothing planned for Monday. Now I don't know what's the rule on public smoking. Can you smoke in uh, outside his store? Is that public acceptable in Arizona? Because uh, I know there are some rules uh, whether or not you can smoke in front of places. So I might go there. With the Gurkha and, and go back to where I bought the Gurkha and finish the Gurkha. I don't know. I don't know. 50 feet from entrance. So within 50 feet from entrance, you can. Well, within 15 feet, you cannot. Like I said, I might need a getaway car. So as soon as I get out, I'm like running to the car and go. Within 50 feet, you can't. Okay. But I can hold a cigar, right? I can show that I literally have that cigar. Oh, this could be like a mission impossible, but I'm, I'm gonna, I might wanna try it. And I, you know, if you guys are in the area, 
do that just for fun for me, all right? Just go in front of it, take a picture with you and the Gurkha, all right? This is called hashtag I'd rather have a Gurkha. <laughs> hashtag I'd rather have a Gurkha. I'm gonna enjoy the heck out of my birthday week this year. Uh, I, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it. But that's the thing, I, you know, they have done events where like in their parking lot and stuff like that. So they, you can technically smoke within 50 feet, right? I mean, so guys, they have run the parties outside and events outside too. So you can smoke any wall out. It really depends, right? You know, I might Uber there and tell the Uber driver to wait and get ready to run. And go over there, go, run! Drive off, spin off the street, went to the cigars daily, quickly. I might do that, I don't know. Because I'm crazy like that. Almost halfway through, I get a little bit of like sandpaper feel to it. A little bit of roughness in the in the draw. A you know, lack of better word, mouthfeel. All right, there's a little bit of mouthfeel consistency to it, and uh, you can you can taste the, the the strength is getting stronger. It's getting more condensed. The smoke output is still the same. Burn a little bit off though. Burn a little bit off, but. I think it will fix itself in no time though. Just gotta flip it around a little bit. Uh, enjoyment level, not too bad. Not too bad. I just had to be very careful and slow because knowing that this is getting stronger, uh, it, it should be something more wary, uh, worrisome to, to, to tr continue to go, you know. I don't want to fall asleep like my Tia Maya. So, you know, I tend to want to go slower. I tend to want to go slower. Okay. And let's see what else uh, is going on in the Legion today. So I was reading um, Harrison's from TNT Cigars uh, uh, suggestion on what to do in Phoenix. He suggested hiking, which you know I'm not going to do that. Uh, foo, uh, that doesn't really tell me what, what is a good place to eat, right? And then breweries, that's beer. Cigar shop, obviously, I'm already going to all that. Zoo, who goes to Arizona to go to zoo? Oh, good luck, Steinheimer. Who, who goes to Arizona just to go to zoos? Who goes to Arizona? Go to zoos. All right, and then he said aquarium. Aquariums. Boston has one of the big aquariums. In fact, I went to uh, one of the biggest aquariums in Georgia. I went to the big one of the biggest aquarium in Georgia, and I went in and came out in one hour. <laughs> I went in and came out in one hour. Why? Because it's kind of weird going there and looking at food. That I cannot eat. <laughs> Going there to look at food that I cannot eat. That's not something that I I would like to do. You know, that's not something I like to do. Uh, let's see. Uh, the music just went off. Kind of weird. Uh, let's go back. What does it say that I signed out? What does it have to say that I'm signed out? I didn't sign out. All right, go back to that. Portable <laughs> back path. It's a uh, over there. It is, but for me, it's like I came from a place with whale watching. I came from a place with whale watching, so it's like, okay, all right, Calvin. Yeah, it's got everything in that Georgia um, aquarium. So I already went to the biggest one. Like, there's not much to see, you know. I went to. 
uh, the Aquaria in uh, Osaka, which is pretty big. I went in there, came out in half an hour. <laughs> I'm not too big of a sightseeing person. I like to hands on, and there's, there's no something hands on to do. I really don't like to stay. I feel like, you know, if you just want to see something, you probably get the better version of what you're about to see on pictures. You know, have you ever thought about those before? Like, you look at the picture of the romantic Paris and the, the Versailles and everything. All right. And then you say, oh, my God, one day I want to be there. And then you actually got to Versailles. Have you seen the lines in Versailles? Four hour lines, no bathroom. That's what you need to endure to take one picture in Versailles. Alright? Uh, uh, uh. All the tourism places in Paris is ridiculously long lines, okay? Now, since I'm here, maybe we should do some show and tells, okay? This is how it looks like. Okay. Here is some pictures that you can easily find online to uh to find how it looks like, okay? And th and this is the thing about tourism because you feel like you're the only one I want to be there, but you don't. For example, Great Wall of China. You only got to get the greatest photo if you're looking at <clears throat> <clears throat> if you're looking at the photo, all right, I'm not kidding. So here's I'm gonna give you some comparisons, okay? If you've never seen this before, you gotta have a ball right here, okay? Here we go. Uh, image. <clears throat> no, my wife is not gonna be traveling with me. <coughs> She knows that, you know, a guy has to do a guy stuff and she's not going to have much fun by her own. So she's not gonna coming with me. I'm just going to spend the time for myself. All right. Here is a beautiful picture of Great Wall. Great Wall of China is beautiful. All right. Great Wall of China is beautiful. And doesn't this look like awesome? Awesome. And people is going to go, ah. To see this beautiful sight, you really have to be there. You really have to go there and experience it, right? Right? And when you get there, this is what you actually see. This is not an altered photo. It's actually what you usually see there. Okay? This is what you see in Great Wall of China. All right, this is what you see. Is there anything to experience? Why do you think I have a phobia on waiting in line? I have a phobia of waiting in lines because pictures like this. I don't like to wait in lines just to see something, and that is waiting in line just to see something. All right. That is the actual photo of how Great Wall of China looks like. They literally had to close down the entire Great Wall of China to take a beautiful picture that you just saw earlier. Would you really like to experience 90 degree weather in this kind of condition? This is where weather and feels like weather changes. 90 degree weather and goes on there. It's gotta feel like 100, 200 degree weather. Brian, you went there in the winter time. Winter time still have plenty of people. All right, winter time still have. It's not as bad, but it's just bad. Right, it's just bad. All right, so let's let's look at another place. Let's look at another place. All right. Um. How about the Eiffel Tower? Eiffel Tower is is Eiffel Tower is 
beautiful. They always advertise to go there for picnics. Let's take a. Let's just do a. Uh, here we go. Beautiful green grass. Absolutely special time. If you have, you can have a picnic, have a wine, some fruits. It's gotta be awesome, right? It's gotta be awesome. You know, look at over, you know, clean skies and nothing crazy. You know, you know, and then when you actually get there, when you actually get there, totally different story. Now we are, we're talking about totally different story. This is what you see right next to the Eiffel Tower. What grass? What grass? You're you're lucky if you can find a spot to sit down, all right. And you better pray that you do not have to go to the bathroom. You better pray that you do not have to go to the bathroom, because no. <laughs> Alright, this is why I don't like to go to events that need to wait in line. Alright, so let's, uh, let's... How about Italy? Everybody loves to go to Venice. It's romantic. It's romantic. It's where love happens. It's where love accident happens. For a good reason, you know? It's romantic. Everyone want to be there. Everyone want to be there. Alright? Right, everyone. Be so those people who didn't get uh, the reference up there is basically having a video car on and video car off. Like when your video car is on, everything looks beautiful in the game. When video car is off, everything looks like crap. <laughs> okay, that's the reference. But yeah, this is how how they advertise. See, photos has like the most beautiful, the best view that you can get. And you're like, oh, I want one of these too. I want to be there and take a romantic photo just like this. Unfortunately, so is uh, hundreds of other people. So this is kind of photo you get. Does that look romantic to you or does that look like a flea market? Does that look romantic to you? You'll be lucky if you can get by. What pictures? What pictures? I'm gonna touch up this a little bit. Yeah. This is why I don't go to actual sightseeing because you already see the best version on photo. Once you go there, totally different story. All right? Once you go there, totally different story. Okay? Uh, have you got to uh, get to Maldives before? Maldives, honeymoon destination. Honeymoon destination. Alright, Maldives. So, honeymoon, romantic places. Look at the picture they show you. Ah, uh, only if I can relax in such a beautiful view, such a nice place. I wanna be there. Just that one chair over there. One chair over there. Well, this is how a picture looks like in actual Maldives. That's how it looks like. This is how it looks like in Maldives. The water is still blue, but look at this. You see, I can still see uh, Brendan uh, Cigar Mechanic package right here. Cigar Mechanic must have sent something to me, and then it landed there. All right, you see that package right there? You see that package right there? If you didn't receive a package from like the previous giveaways, it's probably there, right there, right up here. 
that what you want? Sightseeing. All right. Uh, let's take another place somewhere that you know people can go. Um, uh, how about Rome, Italy? Rome, you know the Colosseum and everything. Everybody want to go there, right? Everybody want to take a nice photo like this. Like they just want to be the professional photographer that can take this kind of pictures. If this is not the most perfect version of Rome, I don't know what is. All right. If this is not perfect version of Rome, and you have to go there to see the perfect version, you're big mistaken. You're mistaken. So bad that you know when you get there, you'll be very very disappointed because this is how it actually looks like in there. You see what I mean? Why I don't wait in lines and go sightseeing? Because where I, where I go, it looks like this kind of stuff. Lines. And doesn't look nearly as good as the photo. Lines and does not look nearly as good as the photo. Your time is wasted at waiting in line just to look at this for five seconds. Because, honestly, what else can you do when you get there? You cannot just sit back and light up a cigar right there. You go over there and go, Wow, that looks magnificent. This is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Wow. And you look around for five minutes and you go, All right, next. What else is there to see? Next. So, this is what I'm saying. To see the best version of things, sometimes... It's not being there, but photos. In fact, if you go to uh, Google Museum in China, which is like the, what they call the, the Forbidden City or the Imperial Palace, however you want to call it, everything in there are gated. You cannot touch them, cannot see the perfect version of it. You can't even take a good picture of it. You can't. All right. Let's see if I can uh, give you guys an example. I don't know if I have a picture of that. Yeah, show up to me. I'll tell you where to go even better. All right, where to go is even better. Okay, here we go. Let me see if I can get you some picture of what they portray Imperial Palace should be like. It's not loading. Here we go. If you ask me, I always tell you to go to places that has hands-on stuff to do. This is the beautiful Imperial Palace. All right, in China. This is absolutely beautiful, right? Absolutely beautiful. Right? Right? I mean, let me let me show you another one. It's so beautiful. That's like, how can you not like this? Like, you're, you're saying, Tony, you must be insane. Such a beautiful area. And you don't want to be there? Such a beautiful area, you don't want to be there? Well, you know, look at this. This is the history of a magnificent architecture. History of magnificent architecture. I cannot imagine why anybody wouldn't want to be there, right? Alright, I cannot imagine why nobody want to go there, right? Why not? Why not? Well, let me see if I can find some actual photo aside from my own photo. Let me see if I can find some photo that's not part of my own photo. 
you can go there freaking early first in the morning it still looks like what i'm about to show you because i got there very early okay uh let's see if i can show you i guess i had to show you my my personal photos okay this is how it looks like you go there very early in the morning this is what you see Bam. Too small? Let's let's enlarge this. This is how it looks like. This is just to get ticket to get in there. This is just to get ticket to get in there. I can tell you this this line loops longer than any Disney ride loops. This thing line is ridiculous, okay? This line is ridiculous. Now, I guess because, you know, I can only find good pictures, so uh, I'm going to show you some of my photos. So I'm going to log into my photo thing and show you guys. China. And hopefully it will load. Hopefully it will load. Alright, here we go. Uh, you go like, oh, this this thing is so beautiful. I must want to see everything, right? But when you go over there, anything that you want to see is gated. You see this? This is a stair that you're not able to walk up from. The stair is beautiful. It's got sculptures in the right in the middle. And you really want to see it? Well, they have a perfect version online of this stair. Alright? Perfectly preserved version. When you get there, well, I'm sorry, sir. You cannot go in there. It's gated. Top and bottom. Want to take a picture? Well, take in front of the gate. Hey, Wild Billy. You are gated. You cannot go in there. All right. Uh. Well. Well. Tony, how about other stuff? You know, it's not gonna be that bad, right? That bad. Well, it is. Let me show you more. If you wait a few minutes to get in there, you start to see groups of tourists. Group of tourists shows up. All right, they don't wait in lines. They just rush in like mobsters, uh, or like lack of better word, a bunch of beggars to to get into where they want to see because they have very limited time. So they don't care how bad it is. They will rush their way in there. Okay, they will rush through windows. So how does that really look like in a in a in a perspective? This is how it looks like. In an elongated view of how they look like. I might have to adjust this. But here it goes. From left to right, there is people all over. Everything you're about to see, prepare to wait in line because those people don't wait in lines and they will squeeze their way in they will squeeze their way into every nook and crannies that you can think of they don't care if it looks bad you will never see them again after this so there's no rule literally their tourist uh, 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 guide will just tell them to just get to see whatever you can don't care they squeeze they punch they kick they scream, they'll do anything and everything just to be able to get in there. That's how it looks like. Everything that you can see is filled with people. And that's where the line form. You'll never get to see the things you want to see. All right. You'll never get to see the things you want to see. Sightseeing? Sightseeing? Really? All right. So, yeah, they show you beautiful pictures like this one. Yeah. Okay. 
that didn't save. Okay, try it again. This is the beautiful picture of what they call the noon door. Okay, the noon door is a gate right in front of the, the museum, and this is where they execute people. All right, Ev everybody who gets executed is executed in front of this. All right, so you know if you want to see where people get executed and whipped to death, that's in front of this. But what you actually see is the picture that I showed you guys earlier, full of people. All right, full of people. Like I showed you two pictures ago, that's the entrance. <laughs> that's the entrance. So the only way to take not pick people is not to have the full picture, not to have the full picture, because you will never, never never be able to get to see everything this is why i don't like to wait in line now you see the reason why i don't want to wait in line why i don't like to wait in line like you want to take a good picture with the statues well it's gated have you been to new york and see the the raging bull in the uh the financial district that's how it looks like over there everything's gated you're not allowed to go in there but funny as as funny as that sounds the gates never stop Chinese tourists to go touch that ball. <laughs> okay? The gate never stopped people. I don't know why. People just can't follow the rules, but they never stop. And their tourists act their tourist guide actually will just tell them, go do whatever. You're not gonna be back here again. Take advantage. They're not gonna do anything to you. If they say something to you, just pretend you don't understand English. Right? So you ask me what is enjoyable and what to do when I go travel. It's like what okay, Tony, you just basically bash everything and don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Like, literally, don't go anywhere. Well, if you see what I see when we are driving by, you probably learn not to go there, too. Right? This is driving by. You see that line right there? Do you see that line right there? The gates is like how many? I don't know how many feet in, in front of the door. I don't know how many feet in front of the door, but once you see this line, you're like, uh, I don't need to see it that bad. <laughs> I don't need to see it that bad. All right, you don't, you, you, you can't handle that. Now you know it's like hundred degree weather in that line just to see what's inside and maybe not be able to see it. So. And do, 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 do. There we go. Uh, all right. Have a good night, Wells. Drop me off in the forest. I will forge for food and wild edibles, lake and fish. My kind. Of, my type of vacation is just go out and eat. All right. So yeah, obviously I go and eat. I I like to go eat. So. I rather spend my day to go eat, to do crazy stuff. So, you know, I go to eat things like this, and this is much more relaxing. You know, and here we go. We go to. You. If you're in Beijing, what do you do? You go to eat Peking duck. It's funny because <laughs> majority of the food on, on the table is not Peking duck. The only Peking duck is in the center. <laughs> that's Peking duck. All right, that's Peking duck. So I've shared this in the in the group before, uh, where you know, we'll go eat Peking duck. Each Peking duck has a certificate of like the number of duck, All right? So here's I'm gonna show you. Each duck is registered and serial numbered. Even tell you in English. There we go. Can you see the bottom it says this number above is the coat of the roast duck? It tell you which duck I ate. It literally tells you what number of duck you ate. All right, one point uh, one point nine six million one hundred fifty seven thousand and thirty seven. That's the number of the duck. That's the number of the duck. 
Dot AA. <laughs> what? What? But hey, you know, it's it's not too bad. It's not too bad, right? It's not too bad. It's not too bad. But like, you know, it shows you that look, if you gotta go to do a touristy stuff, that that will be pretty cool thing to do for tourism, right? Tour tourism, uh, is eating. Go to the locals. Probably better than go to tourist attractions because everybody wanna go to that tourist attraction. Everybody wants to. Okay. Uh, let me show you another. Uh, how I relax in China. Mm. Let's see if I can find a good picture from, from the. I only have uh, like a side thing. Okay, so here, here it is. Here it is. So. I go and enjoy breakfast and, and literally, you know, in, in places. And here is like how those breakfast places look like. Do, 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 do. Bam. That's how it looks like. It's pretty nice. Pretty different, right? The food is actually where the books is. The food is where the books are. So you go in there, you pick up food, and you sit down and really enjoy quietness. Quietness. My brother speared a sturgeon last winter. You had GPS tracker in it. Got to see where the fish went and approximate age. How long did it last? How long did that battery last? How long did that battery last? How long did that battery last? See if I can show you more. Um. Now here's sightseeing, and I I enjoy sightseeing for just split second that I don't have to wait in line. So I took a picture of this. This is my kind of sightseeing. Do you guys know what this is? This is to, this is the Fuji Mountain. I was taking a picture of the Fuji Mountain while I was on a train. Nice. No waiting in line. Enjoy where I'm going, and yet I got to sightseeing. That's the sightseeing. I don't have to see Fuji Mountain for that long. I don't have to see Fuji Mountain for that long. So I just took a picture. I took a look. Good look at it. Uh, it's good smoke, uh, good distance. This is the bullet train. So it's good distance that we see. Very enjoyable. Quiet, no waiting in line. And in fact, we're eating on the train. We're eating on the train while, while enjoying this view. You know, that's how I, my type of enjoyment is like. My type of enjoyment is this. Quiet, enjoyable uh, a time, no waiting in line. And then we go to uh, eat, okay? What kind of food do I enjoy? I enjoy food that's kind of different, right? Different. And where else are you going to find this? I'm going to show you guys this. Uh, let me see if I have a better picture because that picture sucks. This is a picture of somebody walking their pet. And I'm pretty sure people in China is going to very be jealous right now. People in China is lacking pork right now. And look at this. This is in Japan. One guy was walking his pet pigs. His pet pig is being walked. Pet pigs are being walked in the street. Now that's different. Now that's different. That is a good picture. I like it. So. So walk, walking the pet pigs. Now I think that's interesting. More interesting some of the sightseeing I can do. Uh, every year when I go back to Japan, uh, a few times a year, I will check this particular sign in front of the famous, the famous Kamimari Mon. 
in front of the Kalyani Mom, there is a police box. So there's a couple police over there uh, to to just keep things, uh, you know, <laughs> back. Uh, to check, make sure that, you know, security and all that stuff. Because it is a tourist area. And they have a sign there to tell you how many people died recently and how many people got injured recently. So here's one of them. One death, 99 injured. One death, 99 injured. And I can show you the other stuff too, but you know, while, while they're at it, I have I took picture of that sign every time I go. Every time I go. Um, ah, here's a good one. Here's a good one. I love to eat sushi. Would you like to guess what sushi this is? Please guess what sushi this is. What meat is this sushi? What meat is this sushi? Yeah, well, that one I can just remove. Maybe I can reset it. See if I can reset that. There we go. It's reset. This sushi is beef. I already removed the guy, so. This sushi is beef. It's raw beef. 100% raw beef. Ever thought of you can eat beef straight raw? That's how you eat it. Raw beef. 100% raw beef. That's how you gotta eat raw stuff. You know? Raw beef. Alright, let me show you other stuff. Now, since I, I show you guys raw beef, and I showed this in the group before. Here is other raw food. Let me see if I can get there. <laughs> it's Wagyu for sure. It's Wagyu. It's not Angus. It's Wagyu. I think it's Kobe, but I, it could I could be wrong. It's just raw, really lean raw beef and really fatty raw beef. Let's see if uh, I have that picture. Keep going back in time. Now this is the type of tourism I enjoy. I go to places and eat crazy stuff. Okay, here he goes. Where you at? Where you at, Tony? Hold on. Still working on it. I have so many years of pictures that I have to find that I was actually eating something different. All right, Sherry. Good night. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's a good one. Here's another rot meat, and you guys can guess what meat this is. There you go. What meat is this? What meat is this? What meat is this? Anybody?
What meat is this? Nobody? All right, ladies and gentlemen. This particular meat is horse. This is raw horse meat. Raw horse meat. Raw horse meat. Raw horse meat. And I love to eat it too. And now, you know, my wife took a picture of me eating it. She, she thought it was kind of disgusting because it's fully raw plus a raw egg. But I actually eat it. <laughs> this is how, I was like, what are you taking picture of me for? I'm going to eat this. I eat the raw horse meat too. Alright, so that's raw horse meat. Sushi is literally a piece of raw meat on top of rice. That's the that's the standard definition of sushi. All right, anything else don't count. Sushi is one slice of raw piece of meat on top of rice. Here's another one. And if you don't know how wagyu looks like, they supposed to look like this. So now that you look at this picture, you will know that like there is a difference in meat color. Like, you know, this is how Wagyu looks like. So when you go to Japan and eat nice meat, they usually put what meat that is. Alright. So that's how beef looks like. That's beef. And let's see. I can find that picture and of course you know you cannot go to Japan without eating ramen and if you have eating ramen in US before look at this and tell me that you don't want to eat this more than the ramen in the US you can raw, eat raw beef beef eat beef we can eat raw chicken you cannot and pork you cannot but you can eat beef raw any red meat, you can usually eat raw. Here is a bowl of ramen in Japan. And you don't even need a skill to make it look good because it looks good. Alright? This is why ramen, you have to go to Japan to eat ramen. Alright? If you eat ramen in America, you think that's ramen? Wait until you eat these. Wait until you eat these. That's ramen. That's ramen. Alright? Ramen in the, in the U.S. doesn't go near like this. All right, that that's why I'm called ramen. Everything else, not so much. Not so much. All right. Uh, here's more. All right, here we go. I showed this in the group before, but if you've never seen it, you know here it goes. What meat is this? What sushi is this? What sushi is this? What sushi is this? Give you a couple seconds to, to guess why I look for another photo. But what sushi is this? What sushi is this? No, this is sushi of whale. That's how whale sushi looks like. Whale. Now I know a lot of people is against eating whale, but if you go to Japan, you eat whale. That's how it looks like. 
That's the raw whale sushi. The white part are also meat. That is a whale. Whale is very fatty. It's got a lot of uh, uh, fat contents on their meat. There's the lean part too. This lean part, that's the fat part, and they use it for, for sushi. They use it for sushi. Let's see if I can find the other one. And you can go to Japan to eat some different kind of ramen. Here's another ramen that I ate over there. You gotta be prepared for this because the mic grows you out. I mean, these pictures are so good, I don't even need to have skill to take pictures of them because the food just looks good. That is a ramen. This is the squid ink cold ramen. It's got squid ink in there. And it's made with ice. So it's a cold ramen uh, that has squid ink in it. Squid ink cold ramen. See? Going to places, I like to go enjoy this kind of things. I, I, you know, no waiting in line, just go eat and enjoy. Alright, that's the Squid Ink Ramen. And let's see. Let's show something that's diabetic worthy. No, it's the it's the ink. So the ink from the squid is actually kind of black, but once you dilute the water, it starts to go towards the purplish, bluish color. That's why it's like that. But that's actual squid ink. Squid ink is more purple than anything. And here is a cup of latte that you can have in Japan. How do you drink this thing? It makes you not want to drink it and just take picture and just look at it. Stare at it for a couple hours before you drink it. You know, you think that, you know, drawing latte heart is good. That you draw this, then your, your coffee shop will do good. <laughs> your coffee shop will do very well if you can draw this. All right. That's what I'm talking about for latte art. Okay. Latte art. Latte art should look like this. And only in Japan you get to experience things like this. You go inside a cockpit and play Gundam games. Okay? Now, you guys know that I like to build like Gundam and stuff like that. So going to Japan, how can you not try a game that allows you to be inside a cockpit? This is how it looks like. Right, you have not tried video game until you try to do things like these. All right, fully immersed video game, and that's how you put. That's how you push. That's how you play. That's how you play. You know, playing game in Japan is fun. Okay, arcade. That's the way it is. Let me show you another picture. This is from the inside. Right, this is how it looks like in the inside. All right. You feel like you're actually in the cockpit controlling the thing. It's fun. All right? That's what I'm talking about in terms of tourism. That I Hands on. Hands on is how we play this. Like this is fun as hell. That literally feels like that you're controlling the Gundam. It's fun. So you compare that to the video game here at home, you're like, why do people like play so much video game in Japan? Well, this is why. This is why. All right, let's talk about dessert. Talk about dessert. If you never eat dessert in Japan before, it's like there's a reason why diabetes is the number one problem in Japan.
this is why. I don't know if you can tell how tall this thing is, but this thing, full length, is above my hair sitting in front of my table. This is a dessert uh, near the, the sky tree. That's the kind of dessert that you want to eat. All right. Yeah, you might gain probably a few pounds, but that's the dessert I want to eat. So, like, you, you, you go to, like, you know, places like ask for a parfait and you look at parfait. And then you go to Japan and look at this, you're like, what parfait? What parfait? Right? What parfait are we talking about? And for cigar lovers, for cigar lovers, how can you not purchase one of these at home? Boom! A cigar chocolate. A cigar chocolate. This kind of looks like a little bit like the the uh, the Brasilia. So th this this is what they sell doing. Uh... All right, have a good night, man. During the Valentine's Day for women to give to guys. Okay, in Japan, Valentine's Day is for a female to give to male. All right, female to give male is for Japan. All right, and and they make some crazy chocolate. Like you think the chocolate here is crazy. You go to Japan and try to go to that uh, market to buy chocolate during the during the Valentine's Day. It's crazy. It's crazy. Let's see if I can find one more. Of that noodle because I have another noodle picture that I want to show you guys but I can't seem to find it now last third of this cigar it starts to get more sweeter and and chocolatey and uh, a little bit more coffee less of woods less of woodsiness to it but it's really really good cigar and very enjoyable uh, what especially while I'm talking to you guys this almost don't feel like uh, uh, almost don't feel like it's heavy you know it, it is a full cigar but when you're talking and when you are taking your time on it it's very enjoyable cigar you don't light it up and I think that inside that uh, chocolate is like a whiskey feeling so it's more like a like a spiked chocolate spiked chocolate it's actually really good it's actually really good let me see if I can find it Um, bu 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 bu. Hi, Hashimoto. Hmm. I don't think I can find that picture. No, I don't think I have that photo. There's another uh, noodle ramen that I ate. It's right under uh, the Tokyo station. There's a, like a little area with all ramen. And I went to eat that ramen. That ramen specialty is actually a bowl of ramen top all the way to f the top with bean sprouts. Like the whole thing is full, okay? And then topped with chunks of pork fat. That thing is great. Right, right. I can tell you that this particular one, I did not get to eat it, but I ate one before. I just didn't eat this particular one. I forgot about it. Uh, let's see if I can find that. I uh, think I have a hard time finding that one. I can't remember which year I ate that. Hmm. Mm. 
No, I don't think so. You only live once, you gotta try new things at least once. Yeah, this is why I say, you know, I don't like to go to that kind of places. I rather to go experience stuff rather than go to see sites. Uh, the sites don't do too much for me. I rather go try things. I go, you know, oh, this is a famous place to eat. Let's go there to eat. This is a famous thing to do. Let's go do that thing. Rather than going there to just look at things. Because like I said before, the best version of that something you want to see is on pictures already. Uh, it's on tourism pamphlet. It's on advertisement. That is the best part of that something sightseeing you can see. I rather go do stuff. I rather go do stuff, and this is what I like to do. So for those people that tell me to go see this and see that, I'm like, you know, but that's not really doing anything, you know. Yeah, like. It's hard to explain in a better term, but what is so fun to watch fish swimming around, you know? And, and I can ask, ask the same thing, you know, what is so fun to see rocks and nothingness, right? If I go there and I end up doing something, that's one thing. But if I just gonna walk there and see rocks, the beauty is already on the best version that you can take on picture, on picture, picture perfect, color perfect, weather perfect. All right, those three are already perfect. They fix it up so there's no people in between. Best thing you can get to already. So, for me, going to see the site is not so much of entertainment, right? You know, I I wouldn't go to you know I went to the Kirin uh, factory for the alcohol for uh, for beer making. I literally didn't give uh, two, uh, two crap about the, the tour. I really was there to drink the beer at the end. <laughs> I was over there, walked through the whole thing. My wife couldn't understand the thing they say because they're all in Japanese. And then just that. We, we just wanted to go to the end and try all the beer that you can only try there. Oh, what am I doing with the bumper? I just took the bumper up and fixed some wiring and almost added a few wiring there and also add a backup sensor on that car. Once you drive with backup sensor for a, while, for a long time, the car that doesn't have backup sensor is kind of annoying because you don't hear the beep. You don't, you don't, you don't know if somebody decides to walk by or pets or whatever. So I just decided to take out the bumper and fix some few of the stuff on there. But while I'm at it, since the bumper is off, I might as well install a backup sensor. That's what I was doing. I just want to show that picture because my wife took a picture that day. She said, people think that you don't work on your car and you only drive German cars. So let's take a picture to show them that you don't. So she took a picture of me working on the Honda. So I do drive Japanese cars too. I do work on my car hands on. It's just not often because when you buy a car that has everything, you don't really have to work on it. You know, that's why, you know, that picture existed. <laughs> that picture existed. Uh, let's see what the other fun one I can show. Uh, not, not particular. And if you guys never seen this before, I took Obrigado to Japan. <laughs> I took Obrigado to Japan. Here's a proof. Obrigado in Japan. This place is called Ginza 6. <laughs> uh, I was smoking over there. I should give a, a couple to people that over there to smoke too. So yeah, Obrigado in Japan. I actually bought it to Japan. This was back when, uh, when Obrigado first came out too. Um... Let me see if I can show you guys how it looks like in Japan. Um, 
Okay. Because this kind of is more detailed than 10 15 minutes. So I guess I, I won't go into detail on that one. I'll save that for next time, show and tell us on how the experience is like to go to Japan, go to the lounge, and pick up cigars there, and, and, and do that kind of stuff, right? Do that kind of stuff. But yeah, Japan has some crazy places that you can go that doesn't have much tourism. But it's still, it's like everyday stuff, but it's a great tourism. When you go to the places that you go, you want to be the locals. You don't want to be a tourist. You're going to have more fun if you immerse, immerse yourself into the, the local culture. If you do the, the touristy stuff, you might not have as much fun as you do. Cool. So, you know, I tend to do the things that locals do. I don't like to do the thing that's touristy because when you do touristy stuff, you're waiting in line. Uh, you experience it one time and might be blown out of proportion. A lot of the reviews and stuff like that are blowing their experience out of proportion and you might not get the same experience. So I tend to like to do the things that's normal for the locals. So I, I highly recommend people who go to places do things that are local. For example, let's say if you go to Mexico, you want to go to the places, the trashiest place that people go eat. Not the best tourism and restaurants, but the trashiest place that people love to eat. That might be, that might be more fun than going to the touristy place where everyone there are tourists. So you go out there, ask them about how their day and stuff like that. They're gonna go, I don't know, I, I just got here yesterday, you know? But if you go to the local, you gotta get the local experience. Uh, you know, you gotta hear the uh, different language and then different you know, people are just like relaxing for their day rather than be there on vacation just the same way as you are. You gotta have so much more fun. You have to do the local stuff. Do the local stuff. Don't do the tourist attraction stuff, right? Don't do the tourist attraction stuff. Do the local stuff. You know, people go to Las Vegas. If you're local, you wouldn't go to the casino to gamble. You would go do other stuff. Drive mud trucks all over the place and do weird stuff. Uh, uh, go shoot in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and, and uh, just not the crazy money pit. Right? You'll go do the fun stuff. So yeah. Ask the locals, go do the local stuff. And that's what I'm asking. Uh, what's their local to do in Arizona so I can do it? <laughs> so I can do it. Anyway, so yeah, this particular uh, life is now two hours and few minutes. So I'm going to end it here. And the next time, I'll try to record something short uh, and continue to review every cigar that's in those boxes. Continue to review any every cigar that's in those boxes. This particular cigar, really, really good. I enjoyed it. It's full body, but... If you take your time on it, two hours to smoke this thing, totally fine. Totally fine, all right? So I'll see you guys next time. We'll end it right here. Have a good night, everybody. Have a good Monday, and I'll see you whenever, all right?